One of the biggest concerns since Kilauea's eruptions began in Leilani Estates last week is air quality. Sulfur dioxide levels in the area remain very high, and officials warn that exposure to high levels of the gas is very harmful. So how can you protect yourself and who is most at risk? To break it all down for us, we're joined by pulmonary medicine doctor Takin Lowe with Adventist, Adventist Health Castle, who joins us with all the details this morning. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Kelly. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, first yeah. off. I know you're, you're going to be really breaking everything down for us. And this is stuff that, you know, people are so curious about because it can have an impact on you. So, so let's get to the first question. What danger does an active volcano pose to our respiratory systems? Well, Kelly... The volcanic ash not only produces just the fumes, the fumes has actually particles and gas. And the biggest thing that's in the news this last week is the sulfur dioxide, mm -hmm. which when it's mixed up with the oxygen in the air and the water that we have plenty of in Hawaii and the sunlight, they become sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid from all the way back to high school, you remember, is the acid that actually can cause irritation, can burn your skin, but when you inhale them, it can actually cause the same damage inside your lungs. In addition to that, there's also different kind of particles like glass, tiny little called silica, that actually can also cause permanent damage in the future as well in the lungs. And that comes out of the volcano as well? That's all come up from the volcano, in addition from the ash. In addition to that, the volcano, when they mix in with all the moisture and so forth, create this phenomenon that we are very familiar with here in, in Hawaii called VOG. So mm -hmm. that is the volcanic smog. So that mixture actually caused a lot of damage, not immediately as well as permanently in the future. And, and what kind of effects could it have? So if you can look at it this way, anything that is breathing in that you can inhale, then you can actually smell, is not good for you. Uh -huh. You should be able to inhale in oxygen, but if you can smell something just like sulfur dioxide, that's probably damaging your lung airway, causing you to actually worsening your lung condition. If you have asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis kind of case like that, you can actually get make those conditions worse. Oh, interesting. And we were hearing that it's not so much, when you think of sulfur, it's not the sulfur smell that you're smelling with the sulfur dioxide, but a lot of people say you just feel the burning already. Oh, that doesn't sound pleasant. Yeah, um, so the, you know, the sulfur dioxide is what we usually, when we were in high school, we would do this rot, rotten egg. That is sulfur dioxide. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the same exact thing that's coming out of the volcano. Who would have thought? More. Plus, Plus more. Plus more. <laughs> there you go. Um, so who is the most at risk for having any respiratory problems from this? Well, people that are young, or what they call the extreme of ages, the young one, the older one, the people that are pregnant, the people that are diabetic, patients that have kidney problems, and of course patients that have respiratory problems like asthma, emphysema, COPD patients like that, those are pretty much, and also those people that have to go work outside, uh, exposed, like those people that are actually first responder, the people that are actually already there uh, on the islands and so forth. Okay, and then how, what's the best way to prevent y yourself from getting any side effects from this? Because again, a lot of people are working out there. Is a store-bought mask sufficient enough? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, that's the bad thing that we thought we had a false sense of security thinking like those little masks is going to help. The one that you really need to have if you're going to get it is what they call the N95 rating. So the N-95 rating, that's the, probably the better one to use. But Three things you should do. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid, to try not to be there as close as you can. Try not to smoke while you're doing that because that actually is making your condition worse. And try to stay indoor. Use air conditioning. Right. And if you do air conditioning, even if it's in the car or in the house, make sure you put it on the recirculation mode so that you're not actually pulling in all the other bad air from the outside in. Right. So those are very important things. And then try to do exercises to help breathing such as like you know keeping your mouth almost partially closed but then inhale through the nose and then blow through your mouth called the pursed lips breathing mm -hmm. or you can actually do like the opera singer do they inhale deeply through the nose and move it move the diaphragm down called the diaphragmatic breathing so those two techniques called the pursed lip breathing and diaphragmatic breathing actually help you with your exercise where you're breathing and stay indoor away from the bog. Okay, good to know. So there is something that you can do to be proactive and to really improve your breathing in general. Hey, those are good tips even <laughs> with, when you're not having situations like this, right? As a matter of fact, yes, that's right. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much, doctor, for joining us and breaking this down for us. And again, we'll
we'll have all that information on our website at k22.com. But definitely something that I think is the biggest question, you know, is this gas going to really negative impact me? And the answer is yes, it could potentially. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for joining welcome. us.